Saturday, pregame.com, People's Champ, Johnny Detroit, and yesterday to recap the Major League Baseball playoffs as my Detroit Tigers are moving on to play the New York Stankies, and Johnny Detroit is so pasty in this wintertime season here in Detroit, I'm blending into the back of the wall, so you couldn't see me right there. The Washington National St. Louis Cardinals game was make or break for various pregame pros. For anyone who had the Washington Nationals, this is how rough of a break it was for you. In live betting at Pinnacle Sports, at one point during the game, you had to risk almost $8,000 to win 100 bucks on the Nationals to win that game outright. That is how rough of a beat it was if you had Washington. If you had St. Louis, you need to pray to the gambling gods and thank them this morning. You need to sacrifice a stripper to them to make up for one of the luckiest comeback wins, but it all pays the same. J.R. O'Donnelly had a big play last night on Navy as they roll all over Central Michigan. Don't forget if you bought Joe Gavazzi on Thursday, his winner dollar selection, you have a 50% off coupon to get his No Mercy play three-star for Saturday. Who am I looking at today? There's tons of guys. I don't want to leave anyone out. Tony George has his game of the year, and when you hear game of the year, you think old school Kevin Duffy or these other sites that every single day they have their Monday game of the year, their Monday night game of the year, their October Monday game of the year, their October Monday NFL game of the year, their conference Monday November game of the year, and they always have something they can attach to be a game of the year. Tony George does not fire the word game of the year around often. It's his biggest play of the year. Spartan, same thing. These guys are not dudes that just throw out triples or big games just to throw them out. There's not a lot of times you could even go back. When is the last time Tony even had a game of the year? Tony, George, Spartan both had big games of the year going today. Dave Essler is 70% on his triple dimes. He's one of the best SEC guys, SEC guys ever at pregame. He has his SEC game of the week. I know Marco has a bigger play up on his homepage, but his early play is on the Pittsburgh-Louisville game, and Marco is the master of any teams involving Pittsburgh-based teams. And Vegas runner, you get a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, all access, all sports for one low price. That's coming down shortly this afternoon, and you can find that at pregamepros.com. A little love to myself. You know, I log on my plays. You never see me put myself on the homepage because anything I sell, I put right back into the company to help build content, hire people, market, and so forth and so forth. I like to put my attention on the pregame pros. They do this for a living. They I know the amount of time and effort that these guys put into the handicapping, producing the content, being on the forums. And my goal is to push the ones that are putting in the work, push the ones that are winning, and focus on them because I know they do this to pay the bills. Where everything I make, I put right back into pregame. So I was going through my spreadsheets to update everything, and I noticed I'm 71% on the season so far. I'm 11 and 5 in college football, and I'm 13 and 5 in the NFL. 24 and 10 so far. For 71%, and what I can attribute that to is in the past, I would get literally all the plays from everyone I knew offshore, every mover, every scalper, everyone I know that was betting something, and I was releasing way too many games to my clients. So what I told myself I was going to do is I was going to put in a lot of extra time and filter this stuff down and get two or three games out, not five, six, seven, eight at a time, which it was all coming from good sources, but the swings are too much for the clients to bear. Also, when you're getting 30, 40 plays and you try narrowing it down to 7, 8 plays, it sucks when you go 3 and 5 and then some of the other plays are going 8 and 2. So I decided to even up my game a little bit more, add some more filters, put a little more research, and limit the volume as much as possible, and I guess take the cream of the crop. And I guess it's paying dividends this football season. And like I said, 71% so far in the year. I almost sound like a shyster even saying that, but it's all documented. Free selection today is from me to you. I like TCU. Not fooled by the game last week, even though I think Iowa State has a strong showing today against Kansas State, not to take anything away from them. They had the issues with the quarterback, with the DUI. They had a lot of turnover. I think they had five total, including two in the fourth quarter. They're going to run the ball. They have the number one scoring defense in the Big 12. They're giving up like 13 points a game. I think that they have the potential to outright beat Baylor today on Saturday. Also, I had a lot of people ask me, um, directly on instant message and email. They're in survivor pools. A lot of people know that I break down the whole season in advance. They said, Johnny, should I be blowing my nut? Should I be taking the Atlanta Falcons this week, or is that a sucker play? Atlanta Falcons this week, one, they're a home team. When you're, I do survivor pools, I always try focusing on teams at home. And I also like to look ahead of the schedule and say, okay, maybe they're minus 10 this week, but 
Can I take another team maybe minus 7 because that's the highest that team's going to be favored at home all year. That team that's minus 13 now later in the year might be minus 17 or minus 10 a Monday Night Football at home, and it, I could forego taking them. This should be the highest line in any Atlanta game at home this season. The only thing that might come pl close, depending on injuries or if they totally shit the bed, is that I believe in Week 11 they play um, the Arizona Cardinals at home. But they're getting they're favored by 9.5. If they lose, they lose. You can't double-guess the math. you got a team that this is the best spot to play Atlanta in a survivor pool off season is this week if you haven't used them yet. So that's my advice, win or lose. Last thing is my tip of the day is don't tease, don't buy points in college football. You hear the three, the seven, the ten, the key numbers. The key numbers in college are not the same as the NFL. You overpay. There is no college football number that the extra money you're paying to buy on or off for it long term will make you or break you, or will break you, I should say. It's not going to save you any cash. So from Johnny Detroit to you, thanks for watching. Best of luck. I'm back Sunday morning.